We've got this list which you haven't seen, which I'm supposed to read out, am I? So we're going to show you what people voted for. And the first one was um, dark energy um, uh, and stem cells and plastic electronics. And I have to say, the person who uh, suggested uh, stem cells and dark energy um, was the rector. And therefore, he's disqualified because... Um, First of all, because dark energy was known about more than 10 years ago. Secondly, because stem cells were first, first looked at in mammalian tissues, certainly in the early 1960s. Um, Bridget Hogan and Bob Edwards were both doing experimental work then on stem cells. But it's obvious that um, the rector doesn't read nature. Plastic electronics, I'm really not sure about. Does anybody know anything about plastic electronics? Um, I'm sure it must be more than 10 years old, though. So I, I didn't feel we should be voting for the rector. Um, but some of you might feel differently. Somebody else has put stem cells up um, in, a, in a slightly more defined way. Um, this, I think, was to suggest that you might use stem cells for specific situations, particularly for diabetes therapy and Parkinson's disease, which has been uh, a hope, um, particularly enhanced by a, a paper in Nature about two years ago. Moving on... Um, minimally invasive, invasive surgery and novel stem cell therapies. I think that was Aradazi, was it? Yes. Well, I think he's disqualified as well because minimally invasive surgery was first done at Imperial College in the 1970s, but he obviously hasn't heard about the work that other people in the college were doing. We won't say who they were, but there were a number of people who were quite interested in laparoscopic surgery at the time. Um, not using robots, but of course, humans aren't as good as robots, as we all know. Um, so that's the next one. Um, so you could vote for that, and the second will decide whether you want to vote for that or not. Then we come on to protein engineering. Um, and I'm not sure who proposed this. Um, it's rather sad that none of the people who proposed these from the senior academic um, part of the college actually uh, have come here to defend their suggestions. Um, but the idea that um, uh, since uh, the development of monoclonal antibodies and gene cloning, uh, protein engineering is one of the most exciting areas of, um, of, uh, uh, of, of molecular biology. And in this respect, um, Greg Winter has been suggested as a scientist who needs um, a major part. The next suggestion, again, I don't know who this was, was climate change. I I'm not sure that climate change really qualifies as a scientific discovery. Um, particularly as climate change probably started happening when we started farming in Abu Huraira 11,000 years ago. But I may be wrong about that. Um, but it seems to me that climate change probably started at least with the Industrial Revolution, if not before, and there's quite a lot of evidence to support that. It may go further back. However, I suppose the final recognition that climate change is going to influence what happens to us and our children is clearly an important one. Um, eureka moments. Um, well, I don't know. I mean, you, which of you doing a PhD feel that you've had a eureka moment? I mean, I think I've, in my lifetime, I think I've probably had about five where I thought, my goodness, that really works. That's incredible. How did that guy publish that? And I can repeat it. It's never something I've done. It's always been something that somebody else has done, and then I realize it's really rather a good thing, having been rather rude about it, in my case. But those eureka moments are interesting. But eureka moments aren't really of the last ten years, are they? I mean, eureka moments happen since... Archimedes, I suppose, ran down the street half naked out of the bath. So I don't, if he really did, um, so I don't know about that. The initial sequencing of the human genome. Well, um, that was published partly in science, partly in nature, but that was in the year 2000, wasn't it, David? I think it's disqualified on the grounds it was 11 years ago, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that, but... 2001? Yeah, okay. So, yeah. 
I mean, you could argue what use is the sequencing of the human genome been to anybody in the room, um, but perhaps we shouldn't go there. Um, artificial living systems, I think, is much more interesting. Um, and incidentally, of course, the sequence of the human genome done commercially was at least in part by Craig Venter, and Craig Venter is probably one of the people who's leading in this area too in synthetic biology. He published a rather interesting paper which is completely unreadable in science last year. Un totally unintelligible. I read it five times and I still didn't really understand what he did, but maybe he intended that we shouldn't understand exactly what he did, I don't know. But the idea, I suppose, of creating life forms in the laboratory is probably genuinely novel. Um, whether it will be important or not, I don't know. But of course, what Craig Venter is hoping is that you might, from those life forms, be able to uh, develop um, either carbon uh, dioxide absorption into a bacterial system or alternatively to generate uh, diesel fuel. And there are also, of course, there's a possibility of making anti malarial drugs, which is not one of Venter's areas, but it's also being done in the States. And then The last one, I think it is the last one, is um, what is the greatest discovery of the last 10 years? The greatest discovery of the last 10 years is that nobody can say what is the greatest discovery of the last 10 years. Um, and the reason why that's up there is because um, if you take the really important things that have happened to us in the last 50 years in science, the microchip, the internet, um, the development of the laser. If you take, for example, the internet, if anybody at the time of designing the internet had really thought it was going to revolutionize and democratize a whole range of human activity, they wouldn't have started the addressing system HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, would they? Um, the point, I think, is that it doesn't become predictable until after 10 years. So 10 years is too short. Um, think about the laser, 50 years ago, almost to the year. We've now got lasers used in nuclear fusion, in um, measuring distances, in rapid telecommunications, in confocal microscopes, sealing the retina to the back of the eye as a surgical instrument, um, uh, possibly in uh, quantum computing in due course, um, and um, uh, in use as a checkout machine in the supermarket when you've bought your food completely unpredictable how really important inventions are made. So there you have it. Well, I think they're going to all be on the board at a time, are they? I hope. Can we have the whole lot up in one go and then we can, we can vote? And you should be able to press the your knob, um, the knob on your machine, that is. Um, and those, uh, and I think you vote, do you just vote one, two or three on, yes. on the handset? So you've got, ten, you've got ten votes and there should be a list if you turn the handset on, which I've done, I forgot the tenth one, which is um, pluripotency in stem cells, which was suggested by, suggested by, uh, by uh, 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 Christian van, van Ogen, and I don't know why I forgot that. So that is your tenth, your tenth one. Do you have a graph? <laughs> well, there's, there's the result. How sensible. <laughs>